Hi guys and welcome back to Garage Gym Series. So today we're going to take you through our top five tips for bent over row. So number one is stance. So personally I like to stand feet hip width apart, toes pointing directly forwards with very slightly bent knees, and my weight leaning very slightly forwards. So from the side, my setup before I even touch the bar is going to be here. So number two is position. Now I've seen a lot of athletes and people get this wrong and really hurt their backs because this is probably one of the most important points to make sure you do properly. So we have to remember that the row is a vertical pull. Now there are different forms of rows which you can alter that angle, but with a bent over row, you want to make sure your elbows are going upwards with the bar. So here rather than there because it puts a lot more stress on your lower back. So once you've got yourself set up, I personally like to be about 45 degrees with my bum pushed out and back, my chest up, my head's looking forwards, and that's got me in a really good position to perform the movement. Number three is angle, which is very closely related to the previous point, number two, which is position. So I'm going to show it from the side so it's easy for you to see. So I alluded to this previously, but we want to try and get our back at 45 degrees as a starting point. So for me, it's going to be about there. So I'm going to make sure my chest is out, my head is up, my, put, my bum is pushed back and up and I'm ready to perform the movement. So for me that would be too high and that would be too low. Somewhere in the middle, usually with the bar around knee height, depending on how long your arms are, is a good position and angle to be in to perform this movement. So number four is grip. Now this ultimately depends on what you're trying to achieve and what muscles you're trying to work. So I'm going to take you through a few different grips now. So you've got overhand closer, overhand wider. You've got underhand closer, underhand wider. Or you can hybrid it, mix it up. You can have over-unders closer or over-unders wider. It ultimately depends on what you're trying to achieve. And if you're new to this, I'd highly recommend a, an overhand grip closer. If you're looking to really target back strength, I would look to maybe mix it up between a closer and a wider in different sets. But if it's if you're going for max strength and it's really heavy, um, you ultimately might need to use straps, but you'll definitely probably need to do some form of over-under depending on what your preference is. So number five is speed. Now I see more people do this incorrectly and less people do this correctly, but it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. So I'm gonna show you from the side so it's easy for you to see. No matter what your outcome, control is key here. So you need to make sure you've got control of the bar, control of the movement uh, above and beyond anything else, just to avoid yourself getting hurt. So. Taking into account all the points we've just discussed previously, get yourself set up, get into the right position, right angle, right grip, and then you're going to be wanting a faster upward movement and a slower downward movement. Faster upwards, slower downwards. Now this also will depend on the amount of weight we're lifting the amount of sets you're doing, the amount of reps you're doing, but that's a really good place to start. So when you are doing this movement, you wanna make sure you're trying to bend the bar in half lengthways, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and squeeze the bar as hard as you can, which is gonna give you even more control. Now, depending on your angle, elbows up is a really good coaching point rather than elbows back, which is more likely to put more stress on that lower part of your spine. So there we have it, guys. We hope you find those useful. 
the ultimate message really is work to your limits and work to your experience of this lift. Make sure you can build up your endurance first with higher volumes of lower intensity before you push towards the opposite, but towards lower volumes of higher intensity. Consider all the points we've discussed. What really helps, as always, is if you've got a mirror, you can see yourself. If you've got someone you're training with or a coach that can give you feedback or videoing yourself, do it, and then playing it back is really, really useful tool. Any questions or comments, please drop below.